So these are the tools of the teak. I have an electric frying pan. It's heated to 275 degrees. And I have beeswax. It smells like the bees, the flowers they went to, and paraffin. And this is called a chanting tool, T-J-A-N-T-I-N-G. Chanting means, in Indonesia, wax writing. And these are special wax brushes. They don't fall apart. And I keep them in a nice point. For this one, I use, this is a Japanese, this is the Chinese brush, and this is the Japanese brush. And I use this one for detail work, and this one to fill in areas. pieces have been flipped upside down and I'm making sure that every single line that I've made ends so that I can put dye inside of it. Over here I have to look for these teeny tiny itty bitty places where the wax could come through. I mean, where the wax did not come through on the back side. I have teeny tiny itty bitty places, right? Here's one. And here a few right here. So I'm putting hot wax on those. Okay, now we're gonna flip them back over and put some dye to make the rivers. Hey, boys and girls, see my mask? It was no problem for me with COVID. These are my blue dyes. So I'm gonna pick some out. Oh yes, here's an indigo blue. You know, we grow that here. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. And a deep meringue. That ought to be enough, maybe. Maybe I want one really pretty green, blue green. Let's try that. All right. Now, this is chemical water, and you use chemistry to make dyes. Because dying is math. Isn't that cool? All right, so I've got these four lined up here. And you have to be very exact with your measurements. I'm going to put an eighth of a teaspoon in each of these. And I'm going to start with the indigo because that's what we love, isn't it? This is as much dye as you can put in and still get uh, the right chemistry. <laughs> All right, we have a blue-green here. See, that's the lavender. These dyes were invented about the year that I was born. Isn't that cool? So I'm the first generation to have them. They're called Procyon dyes, and they chemically bond with the cloth. 
You have to stir it up so that all the pigments go in. And then you get them all. Each one has its own little brush so that you don't contaminate the dyes. I wear these gloves just like a scientist. And I have a hood and it pulls out all of the dyes so that I stay healthy. All right, now here comes the chemistry. <laughs> you add soda ash, a quarter teaspoon to a half a cup, which is an eighth of a teaspoon. Got to do some math. All right, here's my little eighth of a teaspoon right here. And you just get a little bit, and toss it in there. Half a teaspoon. Kind of like cooking in it. You know, when your mama's cooking, or your dad. These are my favorite brushes. They're called Cat's Tug. And you'll see why in a minute. All right, we're gonna be over in with the petites. Save some of this indigo for these other pieces, so I'm going to pour it in. About half of them. And I'm going to start with something called a hockey brush. It's Japanese. You start down on one end. Isn't that beautiful? So the indigo plant is planted all over the sea islands and it was how South Carolina made a lot of its money in the olden days. Now I'm gonna let this dye get married with another color. I'm gonna let this blue come in and just say hi. I always like to have music whenever I'm working because it just makes my day better. Do you like music? I do. And that's how you make a color gradation. You just do a little bit of colors together at a time. And that way you don't even see it happening. But it is happening. You have to be real careful not to splatter any dye because you can't erase anything with these dyes. Now before I start those rivers, and they're going to go up in different colors, I'm going to take my other big, big, big hockey brush. and let it do this. This blends the dyes even better. See, this is the cat's tongue. See how it has a point on it? You can see why it's named that. And I'm also gonna make sure that this goes along this edge a little bit, just so that it blends. The reason why I like this brush is it gets into teeny tiny places. Whoop, I got another little piece of dye in the place we didn't want it. So, once again, I'm just going to drop a little bit of the chemical water in that one little spot, and it will dissipate, which means it will spread out. And it won't even be there. Thank you. Okay, well, it's going to take a long time to get it all together. If you want, we can speed it up.
Procyon MX dyes are cold water dyes that are fixed chemically. Cellulose fibers like cotton, linen, hemp, bamboo, paper, and wood all work with these Procyon dyes. Fiber reactive dyes permanently attach using a covalent, an electron sharing bond. These molecules carry a chromophone, which absorbs varying spectrums of light, allowing only certain spectrums to reflect. Soda ash raises the pH. Baking soda is a much weaker alkali. Urea helps dissolve more dye in a smaller amount of water. It's a humectant, keeping the fabric wetter longer. Water softener reduces calcium in hard water. The Edo period is between 1603 in 1868 in the history of Japan. The term yukioi means pictures of the floating world in paintings or woodblock prints. Hokusai and Hirosige are two of the artists that I like to study for my own work. The silks that I'm working on in this film are made from maps, but I began flying with my brother over the sea islands of Georgia in 1980. I photographed with 35 millimeter slide film that became the first designs for large scale art from the aerial perspective. Depictions of complex patterns of the coast motivates me to show the vulnerability of threatened landscapes. Today, my Nikon D90 camera and iPhone excursions in the sky have led to groundbreaking exhibitions. Our next exhibition together is Shifting East Coast Barrier Islands, which will be a film and show with Dr. Oren Pilkey talking about the vulnerability of our coastlines. So the reason why batik is called resist dyeing is because you put a layer of wax, hot wax, paraffin, and beeswax to resist the next dye bath. That's what I'm doing right now. It's real easy to do in these areas that are um, already waxed, but you have to be much more careful in the areas that aren't waxed already. So now, I'm waxing out the marshes that are edging the mainland of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina.
going to museums to study an artist's entire body of work will really stimulate growth. Georgia O'Keeffe, Whistler, John Singer Sargent, Bernard, Augustus Tack. The list is endless of artists that bring color and light to us. Gauguin. Oh, it just is wonderful to go and see what another artist has done with their lifetime. Monet may be my favorite artist. I like the way he came repeatedly to the same subjects. Here we have Isle of Palms, Dewey's, and Capers Islands. And the interesting thing is, this is a developed island. This is an environmentally developed island. And this is an undeveloped island. So they're totally different from each other. But right now I'm getting off any little pieces of dye. And this is the front side. And you can see where the wax is and then the places where it's not. So then I'm going to flip it over and clean the other side. All right. And I just have to make sure that there aren't any little spots of dye on here that I don't want. But this looks pretty good. And I, I, I like this part, the iron 